We are starting a brand new series, as Ian said, He Restores My Soul. And I've been amazed at God um, time and time again, particularly over this year, when he lays a teaching series on our hearts, just how timely it is. He really is a good, good father. He, he knows what we need before we know it. Uh, we you know, think about series months in advance and uh, he restores my soul. I, I don't think it could be more timely as we're coming out of lockdown, as life is picking up pace again and we're picking up the pieces of what the last year and a bit has done. Um, it's taken its toll in so many ways and a lot of us feel soul weary and soul worn out and maybe a little bit untethered and disconnected. And so we want to spend the, this next six weeks, we would usually in the summer do running with the giants, but we shelved that and said, no, we, we sense God wants to restore our souls. And we want to take time to really be in his presence and draw near to him. And we've got this beautiful graphic um, behind me, and it's just, just to speak to those green pastures that were in Psalm 23. So Vicky, thank you uh, for all your work on, on that graphic. It's just really stunning. I think I might get one printed and hang it in my house. Um, and I, I've said that about a couple of, of uh, the series designs, but this one in particular uh, just really does something to my soul. It's those green pastures. It really tells me that God wants to lead me to. So before we kind of go in, Further, I just want to read, I know Ian read it earlier, but I just want to focus our hearts again on Psalm 23, verses 1 to 3. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I just want to focus on that last little bit. And there's something about just really taking scripture in and taking the word in. And I don't know if you just want to put your hand on your heart at the beginning of this series. Just as we read out those, those last, that last verse. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restores my soul. It's a truth and it's a promise. And um, I've really loved sitting in this scripture over the last few weeks as I've prepared. Um, and I found some teaching from Levi Lusco, and uh, he's a great guy. And I've, I've stolen or borrowed uh, a couple of his headings from one of his talks just because they really spoke to me. I thought that sums up what, exactly what I want to say. So thanks to Levi Lusco. Don't know you, never met you, probably never will. Um, but thank you for your headings this morning. Um, they, they are leading, guiding my talk. Um, but the, what's so beautiful about this psalm is David has written this. So I don't know how much you know about David, and we're not going to go into it massively, but he failed lots of times. He was, he was anointed as a, as a king when he was a shepherd boy, but he knew that was his future, but he messed up. He messed up with his sons. He messed up with his uh, affairs and women. He messed up. He wandered off. And David, of all people, this is his kind of reaction his talk about how God reacts when we wander off. And I love that it's David who's written this, the one who wandered so many times. So I don't know how you feel as we're coming out of lockdown. I don't know how you feel at the end of these, you know, 18 months are we at now. I've lost count. You might feel like you've wandered in your soul a bit. It was weird, wasn't it? Working from home, being at home, and, you know, then having, you know, being quarantined at times or, you know, self-isolating. Or... If, if you're a key worker, just being so busy, just life ramped up and it was stressful and it was high, high energy and it was full on. And we've kind of covered all of that. And so I don't know how your soul feels today. I don't know if you feel weary and worn out or if you've wandered. Because kind of our normal habits went out the window, our, our normal life disappeared. Everything we, that brought us structure and connection went and we had this kind of new normal, as people were calling it, but it was, there was no norm, nothing normal about it. And so I think our souls have borne the brunt of that. 
And for some of us, we may have found we've wandered a little bit in our connection with God and our, our, our time with him. So maybe you're here this morning, but you're barely here. And that's okay. That is okay. Because do you know what the first thing that this psalm tells me is that the Lord, our shepherd, pursues us. He pursues me. He pursues me. Why does he pursue us? And why does he have to pursue us? He has to pursue us because we wander. That's what we do. We're sheep. We wander. We all like sheep have gone astray, it says in scripture. We are like sheep. I love that God chose sheep to describe us. He could have picked any animal he created, but he chose sheep, right? He chose sheep because they wander off and he knows what we're like. And they're not like when I'm in Zambia, uh, it's amazing at one time of the year, we get to see the bat migration that happens. They come and land uh, right where we are in Ndola and they, they stay in the trees there over from dusk till dawn and then, no, sorry, from dawn till dusk. And then at dusk, the, there's an incredible noise and incredible lifting, all the bats, and they just know where to go. And they go up to Kasanka and they feed on the fruit and then they come back in the morning. And then they rest for the day in the trees in Ndola. And then they do, they have this inner kind of navigation system. They know where they're going and then they come back. Sheep are not like that. <laughs> they wander and they get lost. We were not called bats. But I'm partly, I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> Sheep are a bit more cuddly. But we weren't called bats. We don't have an inner migration, like navigation system. We're not so good at that. We don't know where we're going. God called us sheep for a reason. Because we're just like them. You know, sheep, uh, those who know me know I quite enjoy researching about sheep. I've done it a few times in different talks. But sheep, <laughs> sheep walk along, I know, I don't know what that says about me. But sheep walk along kind of this, in, in those days anyway, walked along a narrow path, they're kind of on the mountainside, whatever, walking a narrow path. But then they go, oh, a little bit of food over here. Sorry, I'm going to just, I try not to go off, off shot. But they get a little munch here. And then they look a bit more, a little munch there, a little bit more tempted for that bit. And then they're gone. They've wandered. But our shepherd pursues us because aren't we like that we get distracted we're, we're on the path we're like yes we're great with God and we feel connected with him and then oh oh something oh social media or that relationship or all oh, that job or oh, all that need to be successful or whatever it is and we or that trauma or we just get distracted and we we just go over here and then oh we're over here and then oh we've wandered but our God pursues us he pursues us. And we know this because in Luke 15, one of the lost stories in Luke 15, it says this in 15 verse 4 and 5. It says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. He goes after the one. He pursues us. He leaves the 99 who are going along the path. And he, he pursues us. He goes after us. And he doesn't go after us to tell us off. He doesn't go after us to give us a whack and chastise us and say, where do you think you've been? How come you're over here? You should have been over there. He comes over and pursues us and picks us up. He picks us up. And he puts us on his shoulders and joyfully carries us home. Isn't that stunning? I wish I had a toy sheep or something here that I could actually physically. But he picks us up and he puts us on our shoulders and he takes us back to where we should be. So if you feel like you're barely connected with God, that you're not on the path, that you feel disconnected, that you've... There's this voice in your head, which is wrong, by the way, but telling you you've let God down or you're not good enough or you call yourself a Christian or you've done this and you've done that. But what about that thing you watched? What about that thing you said? What about that thing you did? What about that person you... And you feel like God want, is going to come and chastise you. He doesn't. The truth is he pursues you so he can pick you up, put you on his shoulders and carry you back joyfully. And that's the truth. That's his kindness towards us. Not just once when we first say yes to Jesus, but his kindness towards us every single time. 
every time. He longs for us to be with him. So he pursues us. So if your soul is weary, if your soul feels distant from God, know that he is he's pursuing you with love, like a shepherd can and does. The second thing he does, and we're going to major on this a little bit, he, he renews us. He renews us. His heart is to make us stronger. He restores my soul. Now, one of my favorite things that I discovered in preparing for this, and I can't believe I didn't know it, considering the name of our church, Restore Community Church, I can't believe I didn't know this and haven't done a study on this before. But that word in this psalm, he restores my soul. The restores, the definition of that is brings back. There's lots of different definitions. You can have a restore across the, the scriptures, but this one is brings back. So what the, the psalmist is saying, what David is saying is he brings my soul back. He brings my soul back. He brings my soul back. So he pursues me and he picks me up and he brings, him, brings me back joyfully and then he brings my soul back. I just am floored by that, that, that phrasing, because it can feel like we're lost and that we're distant, that we're untethered, that we just have wandered so far and he brings our soul back. You see, sheep, sorry, going back to sheep, but sheep, when they wander off, um, that, you know, they, they actually can end up upside down uh, because they, <laughs> they get turned upside down very easily, apparently, um, because they pick bad places to lie down. It's not like their shepherd's found them a nice, I ma you know, he makes me lie down. It, the shepherd does that for the sheep. You know, he finds nice places for them to lie down that are safe and, and right and flat. Sheep don't pick so well. We don't pick so well where we lie down. And sheep, they, they'll get themselves in a bit of trouble. So they choose a bad place to lie down. They fall asleep because they've munched so much of the wrong stuff. They fall asleep. And as they're asleep, they kind of roll over sometimes onto their back. And they're literally upside down. Um, if anyone's a shepherd, I'm really sorry, but this is the research I found. So, you know, <laughs> we're, go we're going with this, people, because it really fits nicely. But they're upside down. <laughs> and, you know, they're not so nimble, sheep. They kind of can't quite, they're all out of proportion. They've got big tummies and little arm legs. They haven't got arms. And they're, you know, they can't get back up. They've rolled over. And it's like kind of, they're upside down. And so when he's going, he's right side, the shepherd is right side upping them. You know, he's putting them up the right side. And it's the same that God does. He brings our soul back. He puts us up the right way where it feels we've turned ourselves upside down. God wants to kind of right side up us and bring our soul back. He picks me up and he puts me back on the path. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? F.B. Meyer, a contemporary of kind of D.L. Moody and that lot, he, he said, the, the words, he restores my soul, are among the most precious words in this priceless psalm. The words, he restores my soul, are among the most precious words in this priceless psalm. If nothing else today, know that he restores your soul. He brings your soul back. He puts you up the right way and puts you back on the path. You know, we hear the voice of the enemy and the lies, we, the voices of our own kind of lies as well, saying God doesn't want us, we've, gone, we've wandered too far, we've, we've not been connected to God often enough, uh, we're a bad Christian, all those things we said before. And the enemy wants you to think that, but that is not the truth. That is not the truth. The truth is when we come into the presence of God, we can be restored. He can bring our soul back and put us up the right way. So after what we've had this year and a half, God can bring you back, restore your soul and put you up the right way and put you on the path. So he pursues us, he renews us, and finally he leads us. He leads us. Now, I wanted to include this because I think it's really important that we, we see this, that we don't just focus on the re restoring of our souls, but it also says that he, you know, he leads us, he puts us on the path of righteousness. 
He leads us towards something better. So he goes after us. He brings us back. He restores our souls. And then he leads us to something better. He leads us to something better than what we originally wandered off and left him for. And this last year, God wants to lead us somewhere better. He wants to lead us somewhere better. So we want to take God at his word, at his promise in this psalm for him to restore our soul over this season and to lead us into something better. Now that better, it might not change the external. COVID may still rage. There may even be a new virus. You know, we're living in a global world now. Global pandemics maybe are here to stay. Maybe your financial situation won't change yet. Your job situation won't change yet. Your external circumstances might not yet change. But he wants to lead you to something better internally in your soul. You know, it says as well in the scripture that may our, our lives prosper as our soul prospers. I think that's partly because our, our perspective changes as well. But he wants our soul to prosper, to lead us to something better. And you know, God, he always leads from the front. We're not kind of blindly, oh God, where do we go now? The shepherd always leads from the front. The sheepdog brings up behind. Again, I think that's right. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I did do quite a lot of research. Um, but the, the, shepherd, the shepherd leads from the front. God leads from the front. And we know this again, John 10, verse 4. It says, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. He goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. So he's pursued us, he's gone after us, he's, he's picked us up and carried us back to the path. He's restored our souls and he leads us. And he leads us because we know his voice. So here's the thing. We need to learn how to hear his voice. And we need to get good at listening to his voice. Not just when it's chaotic, or, you, know, you know, when things go bad, like, God, I really need to hear from you. We need to do it when the everyday, the calm is happening so that when those moments come, we have his voice. We know it. We can hear the still small voice in the midst of the storm. This last season has been challenging and chaotic for so many of us. And so this series is about how we rest well, how we recover our souls and, and feed our souls in him. So we want to get good at listening to his voice. We want to get good so that we can be led to something better. We can be led to paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So we're going to look at rhythms of how we hear God's voice, how we be in his presence over this summer. We've got, we're going to be using some of the, looking at some of the spiritual practices as they're called, or habits or formations, or just ways to hear God's voice. <laughs> to be led by him. And we're, we've lent into some of the teaching from um, Bridgetown Church, from John Mark Comer, and uh, the kind of the be with Jesus, the practicing the way, they call it practicing the way. And so we're going to be looking at Sabbath. We're going to be looking at Bible reading. We're going to be looking at prayer, silence and solitude, and fasting. All ways that we can have our souls restored because we're in his presence and we're being, we get to know his voice and be led by him. And so we just, I want to encourage you over this summer to, to lean into some of this. If you, if you want to know true restoration of having your soul brought back and being led by him as we were designed to be because we are sheep and he is our shepherd, then can I encourage you to lean into this. It's not, you know, we say spiritual disciplines and that can sound harsh. It's not. It's a way to hear God's voice. It's a way to be led by your shepherd because we all like sheep have gone astray. So lean in this summer. And also we're starting tomorrow evening an online, uh, the prayer course. We're, we're going to start that online. So if you want to be a part of that, we're going to journey through the Lord's Prayer for eight weeks on a Monday evening, uh, starting tomorrow night. 
And we're just it's, uh, from the, the prayercourse.org. You can look it up, uh, Pete Gregg from 24 seven prayer. And we're just going to take eight weeks to unpack some of that and share some of that. There's videos that we're going to watch uh, that they've done. And then we'll just chat about it for a bit on a Zoom and just journey together so that we can lean into prayer, lean into being in his presence and hearing his voice. So I would encourage you, if you haven't signed up for that yet, then do. The hosts are going to put the link on the chat now if they haven't already. But for today, for today, know that he restores my soul. He restores your soul. He brings it back. Just think, church, what come September? If we have lent into this series, into this teaching, into these habits, how well we might be. How truly restored, living up to the name God's given us. I think it's funny, this series has been quite contested in lots of ways. And I think it's because God has called us to be a restored community church and we need to be living restored lives ourselves. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to allow him, allow God to pick us up, carry us, bring our souls back and lead us. And maybe you've never known that before. Maybe you've only ever known wandering. Maybe you've never said yes or let, let Father God come and pick you up and bring you back. I want to say today might be your day. Today might be your day to say yes to Jesus. Say, Father, would you come? Would you come and pick me up from my wandering and bring me back? Restore my soul and lead me to something better. And the band are going to come up and we're going to respond in worship, just having that, the truth of God's reckless love sung over us. But I want to pray for us this morning. Maybe you're someone who's been with Jesus for many, many years and walked with him, but you felt yourself over this last year wandering because life's been chaotic and you, you've wandered off and you want to say, Jesus, come pick me up and bring me back. Or maybe like I just said before, you've never said yes to Jesus. You've never known that the Father God isn't a Father God who wants to hit you over the head and tell you off. He's a God who wants to pick you up and carry you back. So I'm going to pray for all of us now. So if that's you, why don't you, again, just put your hand on your heart just to show that's me. I want to pray. I want to come back. I want my soul restored. Father, thank you that you are a good, good father, that you are a good, good shepherd. Thank you, Lord, that you know us better than we know ourselves, that you know that we're prone to wandering. And you say, I'm going to come after you. Thank you that you pursue us in love. Thank you for that picture where it shows you picking us up and joyfully carrying us home on your shoulders so that you can put us the right way up again, put us on the path to something better. And Lord, for those of us this morning who know we've wandered we've got distracted we've we've kind of strayed off a little bit we want to say sorry we want to say sorry for our wandering sorry for our bad habits sorry for taking our eyes off our good shepherd but thank you Lord that you welcome us back that you want to Put us up the right way again, gently and kindly, and lead us into something better. But we choose to lean into you over this summer season. We ask you, would you come restore our souls? And for those of us who have never known this truth before, 
who have maybe seen you this morning for the first time as a father God, as a shepherd who cares and is kind towards us. We say yes. We say yes to you. Good shepherd, would you bring me back to who I was originally intended to be? Would you bring me back and restore my soul where it's worn down, where it's weary, where it's wandered? Well, forgive me from my past. Restore my soul. And give me hope for the future because of your son, Jesus, who died for me, that I might live and get to call you my shepherd. In Jesus' name. Amen.